The Melba Patillo Story. The year is 1954. Melba Patillo is 12 years old, smart, and black. Melba has good teachers in her all-black school in Little Rock, Arkansas, but nothing else is nearly as nice as the white children's schools. Segregation is a fact of life during this time in United States history. Blacks and whites are separated in almost all areas of life. Melba's school is freezing in winter and her school books are old and worn out. Schools for black children are supposed to be separate but equal with the schools for white students, but they're not. On May 17, 1954, the United States Supreme Court rules that separate public schools are illegal. Black children must be allowed to go to school with white children. Three years later, in September 1957, Melba Patillo is enrolled in the all-white Central High School in Little Rock. She is now 15 years old. Her life is about to change forever. On September 4, 1957, Melba and eight other students arrive for the first day at Central High School. They are becoming known as the Little Rock Nine. As they get out of their cars, they see a huge, angry mob of white people. Two, four, six, eight, we ain't gonna integrate, the crowd screams. They do not let the black students inside the school. Governor Faubus and the school board go to court to stop integration of the high school. Thurgood Marshall, a famous lawyer with the NAACP, defends the students. The courts rule that integration must continue. On September 23, 1957, Melba Patillo and the other eight black students again attempt to attend school. Again, there is a screaming mob outside the school. Just before noon, the mob breaks through the barricades, threatening to hang the students. Bricks are thrown at the police and the National Guardsmen. As the rioting continues, the students are led to a basement area where they hide in cars and are driven to safety. President Dwight D. Eisenhower warns Governor Faubus against blocking the integration of the school. He sends in the 101st Airborne Army Unit to guard the Little Rock Nine and stay with them as they attend school. As Melba endures all kinds of abuse at the hands of white students, she realizes her goals have changed. At first she wanted to go just to attend a better school. Now it is not just about what she wants. It is an opportunity for all black students. Dr. Martin Luther King meets with the Little Rock Nine. Dr. King tells them that they are fighting for generations not yet born. The black students continue to attend Central High School despite the mobs of white people. The army soldiers continue to guard them daily. Even camping out in the gym. Finally, it is May 27th of 1958. 
Eight of the nine students make it through that year. Ernie Green became the first African-American student to graduate from Central High School. Governor Faubus is still determined to stop integration. He closes all of the schools for 1958 and 1959. Melba has to move to California to finish school because of threats. The Ku Klux Klan has begun to threaten the families of the black students. The Ku Klux Klan puts a $10,000 bounty on Melba's head. Melba and the other students go to the other schools to finish their schooling. Melba Patillo goes to live with a white family in Santa Rosa, California. She finishes high school, attends college, and becomes a reporter for NBC. She marries and has a daughter. She also adopts two four-year-old boys in 1995 at the age of 52. On September 25, 1997, Melba Patillo Bills and the other members of the Little Rock Nine gathered at Central High School for a reunion. Forty years before, President Eisenhower sent troops so she could walk up those stairs. On this day, President Bill Clinton walked beside Melba as she went up those stairs. Thanks to the Little Rock Nine and many others, children of all races can now learn together and have truly equal opportunities.